Welcome back to Curiosity. I'm very excited to be able to say that because she is a real boat now. Last week we were on sea trials and we were sort of beating her up. And now this week they are doing, well, everything that we found from sea trials and all of our red tape. That's what they're dealing with right now. And then for us, we are trying to prepare ourselves and all the stuff that needs to come on to here so that we can sail out of here. And we're gonna be doing that in a little bit of a rush this week because Chinese New Year is right around the corner. And if we don't get out of here before that, we will be stuck for weeks. Because everybody goes on holiday. Right, it's a holiday. Everybody wants to go away and not be working Stay as they should. Family, yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, we don't want to be stuck in this little marina here because we can't sail anywhere. We got to check out of this country. So yeah, we are on a bit of a schedule. We've got several things kind of working against us a little bit, not just time. Our first big challenge is weather. And looking at me right here, you think, damn, it looks like a beautiful day. We got blue sky, we got sun. Well, actually, this marina is very protected and just out there in the Taiwan Straits, it's blowing a gale and there's warnings everywhere. The waves are steep, it's shallow, the wind funnels through the Taiwan Straits, whips around the southern tip of Taiwan and just goes crazy, wind against wave. Massive tides today, it's like the, um, what do they call it? King, uh, tide? King tide, yeah, it's like a 27 foot swing in the tide today. Incredible, you don't wanna be in rivers and you don't wanna be on shallow banks in that kind of a swing. So we thought maybe we'd be able to leave this week. There's just no way. It's also freezing cold. It was 30 this morning and it's like a high of 45. So we definitely don't wanna leave in a situation like that. So we're hoping, watching the weather, checking predict wind all the time, there might be a weather window at the very end of next week. There's also some other really interesting things that we have just found out, and we will show you those inside. All right. Welcome to the staging room, the room where we prep to prep. We've spent most of our day in this room, this very echoey, echo, echo, echoey room, <laughs> organizing, and we've gotten it into sections, because this is the way we think we're gonna load the boat up. We think it makes sense. Okay. We'll find out very soon. <laughs> this is our prepare to prepare room. First section, probably third to largest, is the kitchen salon area. Because we're thinking if we unload it by spaces, we'll move in the most efficient and fast. Put it all away, you come back, and then you grab the next section. So this, kitchen galley, Moving over into bedding and towels. Yep, just bedding and towels. Then <laughs> we've got the like sporting goods. This is our, all of our dive gear. Then we've got like coolers, dry bags, things that will live probably in the cockpit or one of the aft lockers. Then we get into a slightly embarrassing section. This is all of my throw pillows for all the different spaces. It's, I may have gotten a few too many, but we won't talk about that. Nice. Maybe. Oh, uh, empty bags, those just need to go back to load up our clothes. This is the second to largest pile, which I feel okay about because this is the boat specific stuff. All of our tools and extra line and our dock lines and cleaning supplies for the boat, but mostly just tools and very practical spares, water filters, fuel filters, all the basics. And then photography gear and video gear office computer vibes. That is not going on the boat. Medical kit, closet storage stuff. And then probably our biggest section, food. This is all of our dried goods that we are going to be taking with us. And this is also where things get real crazy. So it turns out we have to document all of this as in item, quantity and weight. But this is the only thing we have to do that for, the food, which makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But you can't go trying to like figure out anything to do with bureaucracy or governments. It never makes any sense to me. That is what is required of us here. And I have had to, which does make sense to me, document things when I'm importing them, right? If we had to ship something to another island or to the boat, we had to document it in that way but never when we were leaving. Most of the time people don't care what you leave with, but they definitely care what you come in with. 
Anyway, that was a new requirement, also one we just found out about, which is the other reason we've decided to separate everything out so we could do the daunting task of writing this all down. And speaking of this daunting task, I'm not done yet. This is just part of the tried goods. We need to make another run to the grocery store, which we will go do right now to add to this pile. So you get to see what provisioning and shopping in China looks like. This is a store that is kind of like a Target, Costco type thing. They've got some international stuff, a lot of Chinese stuff. It's called Metro. Not every store in China is like this, but this is like a good example of a little bit of everything. Of course, this is China, so you've got an entire aisle dedicated to rice makers and slow cookers. <laughs> so what are we here for? I need spices, and they have kind of a good selection of that. Maybe some other dried goods. I'm not actually entirely sure. I'm gonna just walk the aisles and see what hits me. Although I do have a list, but it's mostly spices, balsamic vinegar, because they have that here. I've not been able to find that anywhere else. This is one of the only places with Tabasco. Beer, some pesto. we have beer on the list? I do not have beer on the list, but Better maybe because that. I knew that we would buy it. Because they also have a good selection of international beer. Straya, Horgarden, several German beers always. I wish I had a small keg, because that would be fun, or that. And then the nice ones, the Trappists, the Tens, the Gouldens, the Westphal, the Chimay's. Ooh, baby. Okay, let's get to it. Ooh! Oh, jeez. Ice cream maker. <gasps> $15 I, had, I had I had one I had one on the last boat and I did use it to keep make moving, ice cream come on no I should get the ice cream maker so many tubs all the tubs what size of tub do you need none of them have seals these would fit in our forward storage compartments mm. hmm here we have air dried beef, <laughs> spicy beef, stewed beef, exotic skewered beef. Translucent beef shreds. Beef in every way you'd like. That's right. They have so a whole every... aisle of dried beefs. Well, or dried meats. Like I think these are dried chicken feet. Yeah, they're, they're real big into the chicken feet, but hey, they get their chicken feet imported from the US because nobody in the US will eat the chicken feet. So they buy them from us and we buy the whole chicken. I mean, we don't personally, but I think it's interesting. At least they eat the whole animal. So you gotta give them props for that. And then of course they have like every type of nut and dried fruit you could want. They love it. And they're peanuts for whatever crazy reason and they're cashews specifically. There's something different about them here. It's a slightly different variety or something. I don't know but they're amazing. They taste so much better <laughs> than the ones that we usually get. I don't know what it is, but they're awfully tasty. These say spiced peanut. Ooh, what does that mean? What kind of spice is on there? It looks like just a regular peanut. This is where my good old friend mm -hmm. Google Translate comes in handy. So I'm sure there are other Translate apps out there, but Google Translate is the one I use and you can download it for offline use, which is really helpful when you're in certain places. You can just take a photo five scented flower. I wonder if that's like a five spice. Look, I'm not saying it's always perfect, <laughs> but you can get the general gist of things. Sometimes translations are hard. It's not so literal. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. Honey nut O's, cocoa balls. These are all very similar to ones you find in America, but they're all slightly different. Nutrigrain, Fruit Loops, Frosties. It's funny how so many things are similar, but they're like slightly different. Now all the fresh fruit and veggie is all pretty standard. But the thing that's very different is all the grocery stores always have fish tanks because this is the way they do fresh seafood around here. Straight up, not just your lobsters, oysters, Crabs, shellfish, cockles. So many different types of clams and cockles. Fish packed on ice. Ugh. Long eel things, squids and octopuses. 
Gramps. Okay, Jason's waiting on me. Joe, how you feel about being on YouTube? <laughs> I need a haircut. Joe here is uh, essentially the first 52. He's like a hybrid of the 50 and the 52. He's the unicorn. 51. The unicorn boat. Yeah. Great success. We got stuff, more stuff, add to the pile. And then we'll add more stuff, and then we'll add more stuff? Mm-hmm. Our boat is gonna be 90% food, 10% other things. All right, we are back on the boat, trying to figure out a little random few things. Safety. Yeah, safety. We've got this really cool thing that's just this like throwable. It says, do not open just throw and it's like an inflatable little raft thing and a big tall inflatable flag and that's what happens if somebody goes man overboard so we can see them easier the whole thing deploys it's kind of heavier than i expected it to be i'm not even going to guess at the weight because i'd probably get it wrong 10 pounds but i'm not saying that i'm thinking we're going to do a temporary mount um, for starters and the, the idea is we want to mount it when we're sailing and then we take it away and stow it so it doesn't get sun damage. It's not in the way, it's not this big yellow eyesore out. We're gonna do a temporary mount with a big suction cup. And I'm thinking like right here. Now, technically this is not like a marine mount. We'll get one of those. But See, sucker. This is a camera mount and it is definitely strong enough to hold an SLR, which is pretty darn heavy. I'm thinking something like that. So then, oh no, she's gone overboard. Hey, whew, shoogie. And that's exactly how you do it. I don't know where those words came from. They just popped out of my mouth, but I'm thinking here or maybe here, but that's the beauty of a suction mount is you don't have to choose. We can move it while we're sailing and base it on where we end up standing the most while we're working the lines. And that's why I'm thinking maybe not on this side because to see the sails, yeah. you're here a lot. Very. And we don't want this going up our butt. I was going to say, I think our uh, our safety equipment might pose a safety hazard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, we'll consider this one done until uh, the first hour of the sale and we change it. <laughs> Continuing on the safety theme, we're also trying to figure out where to mount an e perb in this boat. And it's so hard because now you've got this like beautiful, lovely thing construction mode at the moment. So I know it doesn't look super fab now, but you have this beautiful, lovely boat at some point. And you don't want to put, it's like the big yellow green piece of equipment, which is very important. And you need to be able to get to it if things go pear shaped. Can't put it in that corner because you wouldn't be able to get to it if you needed to activate it. Maybe, I don't know, like in that corner. <laughs> then we put a plant and you try to hide it <laughs> uh, when you're at anchor. I don't know. Like, it's about this size. This is clearly not the EPIRB. This is my. We have it back at the apartment because we still have to register, register it. it. Yeah. yeah, I really am at a loss because you don't want to put it down below. It's got to be up above. Probably don't want it mounted outside, right? Well, it's, it's pretty dry, not on this side, but maybe on the other, but that's stacked with cushions at the moment. But what if you, or like up here, now I'm, I'm pulling the internet, which is never, <laughs> no, seriously though, any uh, thoughts on safety of where an eberherb should or should not be mounted? Let me know. Happy to read it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We are doing quality check here, inspection. We got different members of all different teams on the boat to uh, go through our list and make sure everything's checked off. So we're making progress. We're making progress. I think it's maybe four o'clock now and we've been there since one. So there goes like three hours in like the blink of an eye, which was just going over a list of things and items and running the mousing line for Starlink and all the little like QC things and I don't even know what my brain is reeling, but it's a long list of things to check over. Progress, I don't know where we stand right now. <laughs> that's what going over that list was. So that's kind of the final 
okay, these are the things we've done. These are the things that are still left to do. So where does that leave us? And that's what we're waiting to find out. So they're gonna kind of process all of that information and then that should give us a pretty clear timeline for when can we finish this up and move on in. I am ready for that. Well, that leaves us right here, back in this room. It's been a, a day of finishing up all the QC stuff. They got the boat pretty much spick and span. We actually haven't seen it this morning. It's really early right now. It's on Saturday. We've got all of our stuff here. We are going to move on board because we officially signed the paperwork yesterday. We are boat owners for the first time again in two years. Two years. We signed the initial papers before the whole molds were even made for this boat. So this has been a two year process. It's all like funneled into today. And I feel excited, overwhelmed, um, thinking about just all of the things. Yeah, so we're moving on. We own a boat and oh, another cool thing. <laughs> Yesterday, our bicycles arrived. Oh, look at this. Carbon fiber, lightweight e-bikes. Yes. 13 kg. I can't wait to tell you all about this. I can't wait to tell you about all about everything. I can't wait to tell you about all the food that we've got, all the things that are going to go on the boat. It's a lot. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, it should be. I'm excited. This yeah. is an exciting face. Yeah. Yeah. I love that the bicycles is the one thing that you had to point yeah. out. It's just because they're spanking new. Yeah, they're spanking new. We were just going yesterday. I rode them for the first time. It's like, woo! <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on this boat. And thank you to everybody you who told to us. Everybody who yeah. told us. This is what she's saying from behind the camera. Thank you to everybody who told us about these bikes because we wouldn't have found them if it wasn't for you. I uh, had a lot of recommendations when I made that video about our storage locker in the front area. I was like, oh, we had these electrics. And, you know, we thought we would use those, but they're too big, they don't fit, blah, blah, blah. And that's how we ended up with these. Yeah. yeah. And we had a lot of very cool suggestions. Yes. Oh, my God. We have so many things to tell you about, so many things to catch you up on. But we will slowly do things throughout the next couple of years. <laughs> we're not in a hurry. we got a boat. Never leave the boat. That's our motto. Never leave the boat. We are going to be uh, having a good time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's start moving boxes. Now we'll have to do like, I don't know, five or six trips like that. And then slowly move everything on the boat, unpack it, get rid of all the packaging. at a better time. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oddly enough, yes, we did officially move into the boat. It's our first day, and it is also my birthday, which Anna remembered. That was very sweet. Brought a cake. It was fabulous. And now we are just here all by our lonesome. We had loads of help, and now I've said we're good with the help because you can't help me anymore because I don't know where to put all of this stuff. <laughs> but we're going to figure that out, and then luckily we have um, a familiar face Longtime friend here to help us with that process. We have Casey because um, when you're going to take off on a brand new boat with a bunch of new technology, you need a rocket scientist on board. So we brought one. 
If you remember, we sailed with Casey on the trimaran. We were trying to remember the first time we met. We don't even remember. That's how long we've been talking. Somewhere in Florida. Somewhere in Florida. I think it was a meetup in LA. Oh, somewhere in LA. It could have been in LA. <laughs> California. It was one of your Patreon meetups. Yeah. Also, uh... Sailor and hole number five is going to be their boat in this playtime. Yep. How do you feel about switching with us? Because we were number five. Oh, I'm happy to take number five. <laughs> I'll let you guys figure everything out, and then I'll have a great trip. <laughs> they needed a little bit more time. We wanted less time, so we swapped a long time ago. And Casey was thinking he was going to be sailing by now. But with the delays and everything else, we got even more time than you originally planned on. But It works out. That's right. We're being the guinea pigs for sailing out of China, and they'll be the next ones, I think, after us. So. Anyway, Casey's going to be joining us for the passage so that he can get some extra time on the boat before he takes delivery of his and help us unpack all of this crap. I don't know why he volunteered for all this, but he did volunteer. <laughs> Trial run. Learning from you guys. That's right. Oh, okay. Back to work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't make it very far. Got a bunch of crap put in places, but definitely not organized. And sun just set. Day flew by. It's just poof gone in an instant we have like four or so days before we need to leave we got a weather window coming up um, and Chinese New Year coming up so we have to be gone before Friday really because it starts next Monday and yeah then we'd be here for like two or three more weeks before we're allowed to leave because everybody leaves and customs won't be there we can't check out so ah okay day one moving board complete well, I think my pre-organization was helpful, but I don't think <laughs> that it solved as many problems as I was hoping. In other words, it still doesn't tell me where I'm going to put everything once I have it here. And that is what we are facing now. And I think it's going to take, I got at least two solid days just to figure out where everything goes. It is, I don't even have that much stuff and it still is crazy. So. Anybody moving house right now, like proper house with real rooms and lots of stuff, I feel oh, for you. Yeah. Because I don't even have that much stuff, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get this done and get out of here. But it's going to happen. We have help. We had lots of help today from the HH crew. They were actually fantastic. Loading up the truck, helping us breathe. If we would have been left on our own to do all of that, we'd just still be moving boxes. We wouldn't have made nearly as much progress. So that was super helpful. So huge thanks to the team for like showing up and helping us do that because immensely helpful. On a and Saturday. On a Saturday, yeah. I mean, it feels like a, it was very nice. They did not have to do that and they sent all those guys to come and help us. So that was, it was really nice. Um, so I do appreciate that. And then of course we have Casey here who is like, super invaluable right now because our heads are so scattered and he's paying attention to so many things that we are not so very helpful to have him here and uh yeah we're gonna spend the next couple of days organizing and then next time we see you it's gonna be like maybe a final provision run and then we're out of here like first passage on this boat that blows my mind i just you feel like you wait so long and then all of a sudden it is here and you feel I don't even know what I feel. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, thank you for being part of it. Uh, thank you for watching whatever this is. I feel like chaos, mass chaos. So scattered. It's so real. It is, <laughs> it is chaos. It is so real because this is chaos. Anyway, lots of love. Very exciting. I, oh, I just, I can't wait for so many things. Just so many things. We have a lot to do before then. Anyway, lots of love. Bye. Dinner time. Birthday yeah. dinner. Yeah, birthday dinner, and we've got to feed Casey, our loyal helper today. We owe him a nice dinner. It's your birthday. You don't owe me a dinner. I owe you a dinner. We owe you a birthday dinner.